Welcome to a Code Report Solution video. In this video, we're going to be covering the solution to the problem entitled Maximum Remaining from the Code Chef April 2019 Long Challenge. The problem states Chef and DA have become friends recently. Chef wants to test DA's intelligence by giving him a puzzle to solve. The puzzle contains an integer sequence A1 to AN. The answer to the puzzle is the maximum of the ith element modulus the jth element taken over all valid i and j's. Help DA solve this puzzle. And the constraints for this problem are going to be n, the number of elements in our sequence will be between 2 and 10 to the 5th, and the value of each of the elements will be between 1 and 10 to the 9. So let's take a look at the examples that Code Chef provided us with. So we were given two examples. For the first one, our input uh, consists of a single integer, which represents n, and then n integers on the next line. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And the answer for this problem is going to be 4. And we get this by uh, taking 4 modulus 5. Um, so obviously, because 5 is greater than 4, when we modulus it, we just get the same number. And for our second example, n is equal to 6, so we get 6 integers, and the answer for this is going to be 5, and we get this by doing 5 modulus 8. Um, so obviously you could brute force this, but due to the constraints, we're going to have up to 10 to the 5 elements. If we do a brute force, that'll end up being quadratic, and we will time out. So there has to be uh, an easier way or faster way to solve this. And the trick is noticing that the maximum is always going to be equal to uh, the modulus of the two largest elements. Um, and that is the two largest unique elements. So the property of sort of uh, the modulus operation is that whenever you have one element and then another element that's greater than that element and you modulus the two, so in this example, four modulus five or five modulus eight, due to the fact that it's bigger, uh, it never divides in any number of times, so we just get back the first number. So the solution to this problem consists of just finding the two largest elements and then modulusing uh, the smaller one against the bigger one, uh, which really we don't even need to do that operation because we know we're just going to get back the first one. So it's to find basically the second largest unique number from our uh, elements in our array A. So we can break this down into the following steps. The first thing to do is to sort the elements, and then we need to make a call either to uh, unique algorithm or uh, depending on the language it's called something different or we can just use a, a set a hash set in order to sort of remove the duplicates and then uh, once we've done this we just take the second largest element and return it and note that there's an asterisk here and that's because there is a corner case and that's when you have all of the elements uh, with the same value in which case you're only going to end up with one unique element and so that means from the original list, whenever you take two of them, they're going to be the same value, and any value modulus itself is going to be equal to zero. So uh, we'll return the second largest value as long as there's two unique elements. If there's only one, we're going to return zero. So we just have to make sure we cover that uh, corner case. So uh, hopefully you were able to figure that out, and we can move to the code solutions now. So taking a look at our Python solution, uh, here we have started to use type annotations, which is something that Python 3 provides us with, uh, because types are great, and you should annotate and use them whenever you can. Um, so we're given, uh, we've read our input in already, and we have a list of integers L. And the way to get the uh, unique elements is just to quickly convert it to a hash set using the set parentheses and then converting it back to a list. So obviously not the most efficient way to do things, um, but it gets the, the trick done very quickly. And then we can just sort it. And on our last line here, we're just returning zero if the length of our list now is equal to one, otherwise returning the second last element, which we can do by using the negative two uh, indexing. Moving on to our C++ solution. Here our function takes a vector of integers and returns an integer. Uh, here we're using trailing return types because it's similar to our Rust and Haskell solutions and the type annotations in Python. So trying to keep things consistent. And on our first line, we're sorting all the integers in our vector. Then we're making a call to unique, which is going to get rid of the duplicates. And we have to, in order to adjust the size of our vector, make sure that we call this within a call to the member function on our vector v erase. 
And once we've done that, we now have our vector of unique elements. So we can just use a ternary operator on our last line and return zero if the size of our vector is equal to one. Otherwise, return the second last element, which will be the second largest. And there's no nice way to do this. The only way to do it is by just subtracting two off the size, which will get us the index to the second last element. Moving on to our Rust solution. So first Rust solution ever. Hopefully I will start to cover uh, Rust solutions more, more often, similar to how I've been covering Haskell uh, as of recently. Uh, it is a very popular language as of late, and it is quite nice. Um, this is sort of my first foray into it. So similar to the C++ solution, it takes a vector of integers. And on our first line, we're making a call to the sort method on our vec. And then we're making a call to dedupe, which is short for deduplicate. And uh, this is the equivalent of the unique in our C++ solution. Note that we don't have to make a call to sort of the erase. Uh, so this is much nicer. And then on our last line, we don't have a ternary operator in Rust, but we do have uh, the fact that if and else statements are expressions and not statements. So we can simply return the result of this if else uh, expression. So if the length of our vector is equal to one, then we return zero. Otherwise, we are going to return the second last element, which similarly to C++, we are just subtracting two off the length of our vector. There might be a nicer way to do this in Rust, but as I'm new to the language, I am not aware of it at the moment. And last but not least, our Haskell solution. Uh, here is the most functional of all of them. If we take a look at our solve function, we're taking a list of integers and returning an integer. And uh, the first thing we're doing is we are calculating our uh, second list of integers y's, which is the result of unique x's. And unique is basically the equivalent of our dedupe in Rust and our erase plus unique in C++. The way you do this is by sorting the uh, elements in our list, then grouping them together. And what group does is it groups the adjacent equal elements into segments. So you're going to end up with a list of lists where each of the list contains all equal elements. And then if we just map the first element, which head is, of each of those lists, we'll end up with a single list of all of the unique elements from our original list of integers. So that's what y's is here. And then we simply have a statement, if the length of y's is equal to 1, return 0. Otherwise, return last uh, init y's. So init will give us the first n minus 1 elements from y's, where uh, y's is our unique elements. And uh, n is the length of the number of elements in y's. And then last will give us the uh, last element from the result of init y's. So effectively, last combined with init applied to y's gives us the second last element in our list y's. So the last thing to talk about is our time complexity for this. And for each of these solutions, it's going to be driven by the sort algorithm, which of course we know is big O of n log n. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.